I'm here to tell you about image magnification. It's, it produces beautiful imagery and it amplifies the smallest motions and makes them visible, written by uh, a few, few fellows from Computer Science Artificial Intelligence Laboratory at MIT. So chaotic and so tranquil at the same time. But how does it work? It's got a few, a few main steps that we'll go over. Some steps that are visualized in the paper itself. But this, this comprehensive diagram, you have your input image or input frame sequence because it's motion based. You need multiple frames. Each frame you spatially decompose and what? How do you spatially decompose? It's basically like you have something called an image pyramid. It's a, and, and in this particular case, it's a Laplacian pyramid. It's called a pyramid because you take your original full-size image, big, big, big base of the pyramid at the bottom, full-size, downsample it, make it smaller, put a blur filter over it. Do it five or six times. Five, you have a five or six level pyramid. And then what do you, what, you have this image, you have all these sizes of image in this image pyramid. And what you can do with that is apply operations at a uniform scale at each level of the pyramid. It has the effect of applying at different spatial frequencies because they're at different scales. Once you have all your different spatial frequencies separated out, you then have to apply temporal filtering. Spatial filtering, followed by temporal filtering. Of course, temporal filtering referring to things occurring at different frequencies in the frame because this algorithm is based on sinusoidal repetitively occurring motion. And you want to be able to specify the temporal frequencies at which you want to magnify. So the way that we're going to separate out these, temp these, these temporal frequencies is a very, very scary equation indeed. Let's put it on screen right now. So, pretty much, you have your amplification factor, alpha sub k, which is formed by multiplying your user-specified amplification factor, alpha, by, oh, what character is that? I don't recall what character that is. Multiplied by gamma sub k, which is an attenuation factor. And this uh, attenuates the different temporal frequencies that we want to magnify. There are many different temporal filters you can use in this algorithm. There's the ideal bandpass filter, which is pretty much, I mean, you and I both know what the temporal bandpass filter is. Of course, the problem with the temporal, with, this, with the, the problem with a, a perfect bandpass filter, the artifacts uh, that are caused by the sharp edges of the bandpass can be displeasing to some, but it has its applications. Of course, besides the ideal bandpass filter, you have your Butterworth filter, and there's also the second order. IIR filter. One thing to note, the range of frequencies that you choose to magnify has a direct impact on the level of magnification. If it's, if it's a tiny little range, 
you know exactly what frequencies you want to amplify, you're going to get a greater level of amplification than if you cast a wide net, so to speak, and amplify everything, and it all kind of blurs together. I suppose in that sense it's ideal to use a an ideal bandpass filter when you know the frequency that you want to amplify. A resting human heart rate, for instance, 50 to 60 beats per minute, or 0.83 to 1 hertz. You can create a bandpass for that range of heart rate, heart rate and then you're in the clear. It is preferable to record at as low of an ISO as you can to minimize noise. And similarly, if you use motion compression algorithms that compress temporally, like H.264, that try to minimize the data stored if you have a still object in the frame, you don't update the data for that object. It degrades the temporal quality of your image and that becomes very uh, exaggerated when you apply Eulerian motion magnification algorithm to, to your footage. But it still produces a usable result, of course. If, even if your image has noise and compression, you can still make things out pretty much. You can make out what you're looking for. It's a very robust algorithm. It can be used in pretty nasty situations. Still got a good image. That's what I like about it. Now I would like to touch on the point of this algorithm over prior attempts. This is of course the, the title of this paper, Eulerian. Eulerian? Eulerian video magnification. These previous attempts at video magnification are Lagrangian perspective as opposed to Eulerian perspective. Grangian dealing with tracking motion and predicting motion of individual particles. This is very computationally intensive compared to Eulerian. Think about it like this. And I got this metaphor from Wikipedia, but it helped me greatly understand the difference between Eulerian and Lagrangian. Lagrangian perspective on fluid dynamics, you are in a boat going down a river, and you're watching the waves go by as you go with the waves down the, down the river, at the same rate as the waves. Well, Larry, and you're sitting on the bank of the river, just sitting there chilling, relaxing, and you just watch the way you watch all the waves go by you. They come and they go, you see all the waves. That's pretty much Eulerian. You're observing groups of particles as they go by, as opposed to a particular particle following its path of motion. So, because of that, the authors of this paper, the Eulerian video magnification paper, recommend Lagrangian magnification instead of Eulerian uh, when you're trying to magnify fine point features at larger amplitudes of magnification. Eulerian works better when you're trying to amplify smooth, lower contrast, larger features in a frame at lower amplification factors. And because of the nature of this algorithm, it would work better to qualitatively assess imagery as opposed to quantitative. Now, 
there are ways to quantitatively assess the performance of this algorithm, specifically in terms of noise over a Lagrangian approach, which is specified in the paper itself. That's a very, that, those are a lot of equations in that, and it would, would be, it would make more sense to simply take a look. We've been looking at footage. We have a lot of good footage. I'm going to stop boring you with all this science mumbo jumbo, and we're just going to take a good look at this footage. It's